Hey, good morning guys. How you doing? Chris Rod here in West Texas, El Paso. Uh, today's video, I haven't touched base with you guys in a couple weeks, but the last video we made, we actually showed you our overseeding process uh, that we incorporate here on the western most part of Texas, here in the south, okay? Um, so this is kind of an update video for you guys. I was going to mow it and get some product down, but I was walking on it and the grass has got some dew, some of that morning dew on it. And we all know there's nothing worse than mowing a wet lawn. <laughs> so we're gonna wait off. I'm gonna hold off till this afternoon probably to let that sunlight, that big old ball of goodness come over here and dry some of this morning dew up before I get the mower on it. Um, but as you guys can see through that little zoom up right there, we got a lot of good germination guys throughout the entire yard, okay? Got a couple trouble areas over there. Some uh, some of the grass seed just didn't germinate, which I'm not too concerned with. But for the majority of the part, this lawn is tall as heck right now. And I've waited for it to get uh, tall because I wanted to show you guys some of the pros and cons of actually doing an overseeding of um, annual. This is annual ryegrass and it's actually kind of dark. I'm a little surprised. I was expecting a lighter green color. Um, but some of the pros and cons of overseeding a Bermuda lawn for that winter ryegrass, right? So uh, as you guys, uh, through the little walkthrough there, the intro there on that Zoom, um, what you guys saw, and I don't know if you can tell, actually, yeah, you can get some, uh, some good imagery there. Some of those really dark uh, patches, circles, if you will, take a while, guess what that is, all right? That's, that's the high fixated urea from the dog pee uh that's just boosted this grass okay in those particular areas that stuff's got to be at least seven eight inches tall where the dog did his business and inside there you got the little brown spots right that's our key indicator um that we've got some uh high nitrogen areas <laughs> and i did not fertilize when i did this overseeding process okay because i wanted to show you guys some of the pros and cons um of not fertilizing while doing an overseeding and doing a fertilizing uh, thereafter, okay, which we're gonna be doing today. I'm actually gonna be feeding the lawn today. Remember, we've transitioned from a southern lawn to a northern grass type, which is the ryegrass. In the winter time, you should be, not winter, it's fall, uh, early fall going into winter, you should be providing your uh, northern grass types, ryegrass, with a good dose of nitrogen. Nitrogen is really going to drive the bus on this one going into the winter period. So um, my example of not fertilizing when I did the actual overseeding process has allowed us to go ahead and see some of those dog pee spots where they're really tall. That's what happens when you get that high dose of nitrogen. Granted, it's from the dog urine. In today's case, after I mow, I am going to be putting down a 2100, uh, which is an ammonium sulfate, uh, pure nitrogen, well, almost. Urea would be pure nitrogen, your 4200 or your 4100. Um, but today we're going to be doing some ammonium sulfate 2100. That's one of, um, I, I guess, you know, a pro is that you're going to have a nice thick green lawn during the winter time. And oddly enough, the Bermuda is still kicking. Okay. Um, Bermuda doesn't really go dormant here in the South, or I should say West Texas in El Paso until about the third week of November. But if you're continuing to feed your lawn, which if you guys have been following along, I haven't done much fertilizing this year at all. Okay. Um, it, it's actually, I did two applications. We're, we're about a pound, maybe a pound and a half of nitrogen all season long, but in between some of this ryegrass, I can still see some of the Bermuda. Um, so, you know, a good pro about overseeding your lawn in the winter time is that you're going to have a nice green lawn. Okay. The second pro that I, I think would, um, essentially I would like to, you know, list here is that as we're growing this ryegrass, it's really it's really a nitrogen fixer, okay? Through sequation, uh, we're gonna be driving, pulling down nitrogen, we're gonna feed it, okay? But we're also gonna be pulling down nitrogen into the soil so that next season, we've got a good amount of nitrogen already in the soil for that Bermuda green up, okay? I think uh, over the years of doing this, um, it's what's really allowed my soil conditions to already have available nutrients inside the soil come next spring because when i did the soil test that earlier this year i didn't have to do anything really uh except for 
what did we have to do? Uh, good Lord, I didn't have to fix the pH. That was good. Nitrogen, phosphorus was high. Potassium was good. I think there might have been um, a, a, an iron deficiency. I really, oh, it was boron, I think. Really something off the wall, which I could care less about boron. But either way, because we're doing the ryegrass overseeding, it's still growing root systems, living, uh, living roots. We're still you know, pulling down that nitrogen into the soil and storing it for next year. That's a huge pro, okay? Now a con. One of the cons is that when we have the dog issues, okay, the pet issues, there's no recovering from that. So these brown areas, I, I can't put, I could throw some more grass seed, which I may sprinkle some grass seed in those areas, but we're gonna continue to let the dogs out and they're gonna continue to do their business. So as you guys see, if you haven't already click the click the subscribe button, the bell notification. So when I get these update videos out, you'll see that it looks nice and green right now, right? But when I start mowing this, some of those dog pee spots are gonna be more evident, okay? More apparent and uh, they become eyesores. That's a big con when if you're going to consider doing this overseeding project. But right now it looks great. It looks even better when it's mowed. Uh, I'm not gonna make this video any longer than it needs to be, but um, <clears throat> I think the last con of doing this, this ryegrass, what I find is a con, is uh, it's got a, the grass blade itself. Let me pull one out here for you. And this is actually uh, interesting because the annual ryegrass is actually, uh, compared to perennial ryegrass, a really thinner blade, okay? Um, it's it's a little, it's not as wide as the, the perennial, I think, so far, just on my observation, but it's waxy. And what happens is when you got a pool deck or cement and some of that grass, maybe from your um, rotary mowers, the wheels, this grass likes to stick to the wheels. And when you come onto the pavement uh, to, to do your turnabouts, this uh, this grass will kind of, it sticks to the pool deck. <laughs> sticks to the pool deck and I gotta get the water hose out there uh, and hose it down. The leaf blower just does not work as good as getting the water hose out here. That's a big con. So you get these little stain marks on your pool deck uh, or your, your driveway or whatnot, but that's kind of the big con. But other than that, a couple pros, a couple cons. Uh, I'm gonna get to the mowing this afternoon. You guys stay tuned. Uh, I'm gonna get down along with that and do some uh, fertilizing today. Some 2100, keep feeding that lawn throughout the winter. Keep me outside, keep mowing. If y'all have any questions about the process, uh, feel free to check out our previous video. It was October 1st that we did the overseeding. Uh, we're now third week of October. We got a nice green annual ryegrass lawn now, and I'm looking forward to maintaining it throughout the winter. All right, you see that grass right there? See how it stains, it sticks to the pool deck. That's that waxy, waxy rye grass. <laughs> or sexy rye grass, I don't know what you wanna call it. It's that cement that gets the worst of it though. Look at that, see how it just sticks to it? All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Um, again, just to kind of recap pros and cons over seeding, we got a good, nice, I'd say almost 95% germination rate from that bag that I actually bought from Tractor Supply. Big old 50 pound bag, annual ryegrass. 
Uh, it's not a blue tag bag, but I wanted to really make these videos, these past two in particular, to show you guys that the typical DIYer can do this, okay? You can spend some money on a blue tag, a uh, certified blue tag grass seed, which I'd normally recommend, but I wanted again to show you guys, you can get some from um, the big box stores as well, okay? The only thing to keep in mind is when you guys are doing this and you look at that back of the bag, and it's got that tag of the type of grass seed, key in, pay attention to the obnoxious weeds uh, percentage inside of it or the weed amount inside of that bag. I chose a bag that's got uh, 0.03%, very little weed seedlings in the bag. And so far, I have not seen one weed germinate, okay? But that doesn't say that one may not germinate next spring, okay, from this particular bag of seed. But, you know, I got a big old bag. It'll probably last me, you know, it can last me up to five years if I go at that 10 pound per thousand square foot rate. But, you know, as you saw right now, it's sprinkling a little bit more seed in some of those dog pee spots. See if I can get some germination out of it. If I can, great. If not, when you stand back and you look at the bigger picture, it looks great. It's not up until you get right on top of the dog pee spots where they become eyesores. But I you know, hope, hope you guys found some value out of this video. Hope you found some value out of this video. Again, a couple pros, a couple cons that we talked about earlier. Uh, we're gonna maintain this real quick on the fertility, okay? With our Southern lawns, our Bermuda lawns, we got Halloween coming up right now, this weekend. You guys should, if not this weekend, within the next couple days, get out there and get your final fall feeding, your final dose of uh, fertilizer down into the ground. I would stick with something heavier on the potassium side, get a little bit of nitrogen down, that way you get a good green pop for that Halloween uh, festivities coming around the corner if you guys are trying to showcase okay if not uh, go with an equal balance fertilizer something of a, a 10 10 10 balance in pk rates or a 13 13 that'll give your soil not so much the grass because your southern lawns depending on where you live are going to go dormant uh within the next month month and a half or so feed the soil that last night uh equal balance fertilizer <coughs> So that next spring, you've already got some nutrients in the soil ready for that early green pop, okay? Now you northern lawn guys, okay? Your tall turf type tall fescues, your KBGs, your Kentucky bluegrasses, your rye grasses. In the winter time is when we're really starting to showcase our lawns, okay? And they're not gonna go dormant, okay? So you gotta get that fall feeding down, get that nitrogen. Today we put down ammonium sulfate, again, the 2100. Uh, really good shot of nitrogen is going to help with that green up. And as you guys can already see, uh, we've got a good amount of green going on, growing on in the lawn. <laughs> that 2100 is really going to give it a good feeding. Um, we're going to keep up with the mowing. Uh, the mowing, I, and if you didn't notice, my cut height was tall today, okay? We, we still apply the one-third rule. Ryegrass can be kept extremely short or you can let it get really tall, whatever your preference is. But we're gonna go ahead and maintain it in the winter time. We kind of keep it a little taller. I'm not busting out a real mower, maintaining one inch, quarter inch cut height, okay? Cause then those dog pee spots become really, really evident. So we're, we like to maintain a little taller grass in the winter time. It's soft on the feet. Um, other than that, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment below. And if you haven't already, again, I appreciate you guys watching, subscribing, uh, share this content if you had any value out of it. And I will check you guys later. Stay tuned. Bye, y'all.